their queen is going to be a problem. You are a Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and Inside Maryland Sports. Com and host of Locked On Terps for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. So there's a lot of stuff to talk about in today's episode. I'm really excited. Thank you again for making us part of your day. You can subscribe to Locked On Terps if you want. Maryland football, basketball, Maryland sports news. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball mainly. And today we got a really fun packed episode. A lot of stuff is going on. There's a lot of news, especially two new stories that we're going to get into. But first I want to start off with maybe the guy that's supposed to save Maryland basketball. Derek Queen is going to be a problem for the rest of the Big Ten not our problem. He's going to fix a lot of the Maryland Terrapins problems, but he is going to be a problem for everyone else. They're going to have to find a way to defend this kid. And everybody already knows the expectations coming in for Dare Queen are maybe the highest ever of a Maryland basketball recruit in terms of the last 10 to 20 years. It's definitely one of the highest expectations that we have on a kid and expectations. Sometimes kids don't live up to them. Sometimes kids succeed them. Sometimes kids can't play to that pressure. Some people can, but I think their queen is going to be just all right. And I think he's going to prove a lot of Maryland fans and Kevin Willard and his teammates think he's going to prove everyone right. But it is going to be interesting to see what he does, but everywhere he has gone, he kind of has played well and lived up to the billing of what we kind of think of him as. When I think about him on his team thrill team, which is his Under Armour circuit team, his AAU team, for those of you guys who don't know, um, you guys, you guys should, you guys know AAU ball, but team thrill was his AAU team. Team thrill is based out of Baltimore area, where it is. That is where Dare Queen is originally from, which is also why he picked Maryland because he wanted, he talked about it. He wanted friends and his family and people to become and come watch the game. It's a short ride down from Baltimore or wherever his friends are in the DMV area and then Baltimore as well. Of course, Baltimore is not part of the DMV area. I'm sure most of you Terps fans know that, but that's part of why he chose Maryland. But he's lived up to the expectation at an AAU ball, and then also with Team Thrill, or excuse me, with Montverde, he also has lived up to the expectations there, and it's different spots. At Team Thrill, he's supposed to be a star. He's the best player on that team. With Montverde, they got, like, it seems like they got five five stars on the team. They got a bunch of Division One commits. They got a bunch of different high-end players, and he's obviously one of their better players for sure because he's one of the better players in the class, so you can't really get a team – that he's not one of the better players on, but it's different because he has to find a way to kind of play a role and fit in. And he's able to do that. And he's able to do that at a really high level at Mount Vernon. I think that's great coming into college. I think he knows how to play a role. I think he knows how, okay, I can get my buckets here. I can play my game here while I'm also playing with some of the best players and they got to get theirs as well. He's playing with the one of, the, one of the guys that people are saying is a generational type of talent in Cooper Flagg. They're saying he's going to be one of the, the better players maybe to ever come out of Duke. They're saying he has a shot to do some really cool things like that. He's playing with that type of generational prospect, a guy that people expect to be the number one pick in the draft in two years, not this year's draft, but the next year's draft. And so he's finding a way to fit in with top level players, which I think is really cool, which I think Mount Verd benefits him in, in multiple ways, but also give credit to him. He is a problem every single place he has gone, whether it's St. Francis playing freshman year there, or it's going to Mount Verd and playing there, whether it's team thrill, 
everywhere I see Derek Queen, he's a problem. And it's not like this guy's a freakish athlete. It's not like he's just doing this with his athleticism. That's not what he is. He's a guy that is insanely skilled, that has a very high basketball IQ, that seems like he'll do anything for the team to win. If he needs to shoot the ball, if he needs to score 20, if he needs to rebound and get 15 boards, if he needs to find people while teams are double teaming him in the post, if he needs to play top end defense, whatever it is, Derek Queen can do. And here gets some more of the meat of the story. And that's what we're here to talk about is last night's performance, his McDonald's All American performance, where you guys all know the McDonald's All American game. But in case you don't, McDonald's All-American game for basketball. Top players in the class go to that. It's a big deal to be a McDonald's All-American. All the top players in whatever class it is, they go to the McDonald's All-American game. They play basketball. They practice for a couple of days. They compete at a high level. I think it gets you a lot better. I'm pretty sure they compete at a pretty high level at the McDonald's All-American game. And the game was a really good game. It was a close game. People are saying it's the best All-Star game that they have seen. I mean, I think they're talking about how weak the NBA All-Star game is just because nobody really tries. And those events can be kind of boring. And a lot of people don't like them, which I can I can understand why. There's not a lot of effort that goes into that. But the fact that we saw Dare Queen play at the, a really high level with a bunch of guys that are going to colleges and are the top players in their class. These aren't just like even normal Division One commits. Like these are the top and five star kids that are like the best player in their respective class. And Dare Queen goes out there and wins co MVP. I think that's some pretty cool stuff that our Maryland commit, that our big-time player that might is supposed to save Maryland basketball, and Maryland hasn't had a McDonald's All-American in six years, he goes out there and wins co-MVP. No pressure at all on him. He just goes out there and plays his game, and that's why I love the fit that he is going to have with the Maryland basketball team because he's going to be able to come in and he's going to be able to come next to Julian Reese. He's not going to take touches from Reese. He's not. He's going to learn how to play inside the system and play within Julian Reese. Wherever he goes, he plays well. He plays in the system. He also produces at a high level, and that's what he did at the McDonald's All-American game. He went for 23 points and eight rebounds and led the East to a win, which is a pretty cool sight to see. The other MVP was actually a guy that we're not going to like for now on in Dylan Harper. We're not going to like him because he's a really good player. Don't get me wrong. Number three player in the class. I've talked about this a little bit when we play Rutgers, how they're bringing in these high-level recruits. But he's one of those high-level recruits that Rutgers is bringing in. Number three player in the class, Dylan Harper's the Rutgers commit, who we will be seeing next year. And maybe that gets settled because I guess they couldn't give one guy the MVP. Maybe we'll see who wins the MVP when we play each other or who wins Big Ten Freshman of the Year. But the other Rutgers kid will also have a shot at that. But Dylan Harper will as well. But I think Derek Queen's going to be right in the thick of that as well. But Dylan Harper won co-MVP. But 23-8 and eight for the East team, pretty cool game for Derek Queen. He showcased a lot of ability, a lot of touch. He showed that he can rebound the ball. He can produce at a high level. And this is not him playing like every minute. And this wasn't your normal all-star game. I want to make this clear. I, I said this a little bit, but this isn't one of those games where it's like you could be like, oh, like I could go out there and get 20 because no one's trying on defense. Those guys are putting in effort and trying. And he was also one of the top guys that people said throughout the week impressed. Um, he was like on the top five like list of different um, – I don't know what you would call them, just evaluators that um, were at the McDonald's All-American event that through the practices said that their queen and a couple other guys were impressing at a really high and playing at a really high level. And so I'm looking at their queen and I'm saying he is going to be a problem coming into Maryland for everybody else. Like I like to say, he's going to be a problem for everyone else. He's going to fix a lot of our problems. But he's going to be a problem in the Big Ten. 
He's so hard to guard. He has a complete game. I don't even know exactly how you stop him. I don't know exactly what his NBA trajectory looks like. The thing that I've been saying about him is like, he's not a dominant athlete. So he's a guy that I could see being in college for a little bit, but I also could see him NBA really liking him and being like, okay, I'm gone after a year as well. I could really see it going a couple of different ways. I'm really unsure of how it goes with Derek Queen. And it'll be really interesting just because I don't think he's a really like a high end athlete, but that could honestly come into benefit Maryland because he could stick around for a while. But at the end of the day, I hope the kid gets to the NBA because I know that's probably his goal at the end of it. And I hope he becomes a high end draft pick because even though you selfishly want these guys to stay at Maryland, you'll continue to get high end recruits if they're seeing that your guys are going to play at the highest level. And that's what I hope their queen is able to do. Maryland star wide receiver, Maryland great, who's now in the NFL, just got traded. I will tell you about that and talk about my thoughts after this ad from Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experience with smart TVs as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest video from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Lock On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www dot amazon.com slash locked on fire tv stefan diggs just got traded maryland great stefan diggs who all maryland fans have grown to love i feel like even if your team uh if you don't if you like a different nfl team all the maryland you all the maryland Fans, I feel like we all love Stefan Diggs, but he has gotten traded to the Houston Texans from the Buffalo Bills. The Adam Schefter report came out about an hour ago, I would say. When you guys are watching this, I don't know exactly how long ago it'll be, but from when I'm recording this, about an, about an hour, uh, maybe more like 30 minutes ago, that the Adam Schefter report came out that Stefan Diggs got traded and it's definitely the biggest sports story of the day, I would say. Usually there's like some type of story, whether it's the NFL draft or the NBA, something happens or whatever it is, March Madness, the Final Four, this DJ Burns kid is a pretty big story. But this probably is the biggest story today in all the sports, one that will get talked about a lot. And I had to give my kind of two cents on it and what I think about it, because it's a Maryland great, and even though we don't talk about the NFL much on here, I do watch the NFL, and I love watching it, and I think it's an awesome product, but we don't really get to talk about it much because, of course, we're a Maryland podcast, but Stefan Diggs, of course, is a Maryland player, so whenever a Maryland great, one of the best Maryland players ever to do it, to be honest, and one of just overall one of the best Maryland athletes ever is traded and it's a big deal. We have to talk about it. We have to take advantage and we have to talk about this. He gets traded to the Texans. And it's interesting because this situation has been complicated for a while now. I honestly wasn't exactly sure what was going on with it because there felt like there was like tension. There felt like there was different things kind of going on with Stefan Diggs and the Bills. Stefan Diggs, you got to know who he is. He's a vocal guy. He's going to say what he believes in. He's going to say if he needs more catches. But there's been a lot of weird stuff going on with him and the Bills. And 
the first couple of years, it seemed like they mesh and everything was going on. He was like, I love my quarterback, Josh Allen. There's, and it, it seemed all good. And Josh Allen was breaking out. And Stephon Diggs was also playing at the highest level of his career. But over the past couple of years, it's been like there's been a lot of problems with this situation. It's been like Stephon Diggs has had a career low year last year. He had problems coming in the last season. There were problems with him coming into camp last season. He was like, it was like a whole weird situation where he was kind of holding out, but like he wasn't, then he was there, then he wasn't. Like there was a whole lot of weird stuff going on. And then if you guys remember after the Bengals and Chiefs, or no, excuse me, the Bengals and Bills game, Stephon Diggs was like visibly like yelling at Josh Allen. We could all see it. You can find that online. And it's been a whole lot of a weird relationship going on with between the Bills and Stefan Diggs. And it's kind of hard for me to understand because I don't know all about it. You guys should definitely check out Locked on Bills to see what they kind of say about it. But I know for one thing, on the football field, this is going to hurt the Bills. I know Stefan Diggs had a down year last year and whatever, but he still had a thousand yard receivers. And I'm looking at this Bills team receiver core, and I'm like, I don't know if there's a ton there right now. They just got rid of um, Gabe Davis as well. He went to the Jaguars. Actually, I'm wearing a Jaguars shirt right now, but Gabe Davis is to the Jaguars. And so it's like he was kind of, he was up and down. At times, you would get 100 yards from him. Sometimes you get 20 or zero. It was weird with Gabe Davis. But you lose your number one wide receiver. You're supposed to be in your Super Bowl gap. So it's supposed to be a time that you're in a gap to win the Super Bowl. Like your window is open and you lose your best player or one of your best players. I'd still say Josh Allen is the best player. And as long as Josh Allen's on their team, they're going to be a contender. But you lose Stefan Diggs, the Maryland great, of course. And it's like they have to get another wide receiver. And then we go, go on to move on to the Houston Texans. And it's, it seems like it's a lot of yay and excitement from them. I, have, I haven't really read much about this at all because it literally just came out. But I saw a couple of people tweeting being like the Houston's offense now. And it the Houston looks good. Houston looks really good on paper. And I think it's a fit. I like Stefan Diggs in Houston. It makes a lot of sense to me. I think, I think D'Amico Ryan's in him kind of mesh with the head coach that D'Amico is. I think he's a player's type of coach. And I don't – do you guys know what I mean? That D'Amico and Stefan Diggs relationship, I feel like it would mesh a little bit better than maybe with McDermott. And it seems like the McDermott relationship was kind of – it's kind of getting like, uh, I don't know if this is the way it's supposed to be anymore. But D'Amico Ryans, I feel like that young kind of new energy that he brings and the new young energy overall that, that Houston Texans bring, I think that that is going to really benefit Stefan Diggs in the long run. I think that really is going to help him, and I think that's really going to put him in a spot where he wants to be. And then there's another part of this, probably the most important part, the head coach probably – you can say quarterback, head coach. Those are two most important things. But then we go to the quarterback spot. C.J. Stroud is an absolute baller for the Houston Texans, of course. Rookie of the year. One of the best rookie seasons ever, if not the best rookie quarterback season ever. And we saw him do this with guys that are like – they didn't have a ton in that wide receiver room that was like particularly impressive to me. I know down the stretch a couple of those guys were playing really well. But he didn't have the Stefan Diggs on that team. And so now that he has Stefan Diggs to enter into that roster, Houston Texans are scary. And I'm honestly excited to see what the Houston Texans can do. I want to see at what type of level they can play at now with Stefan Diggs. And I want Stefan Diggs to do some huge things with CJ Stroud, with D'Amico Ryans, and the Texans. But people are going to be on the Texans. People are going to like the Texans. And he stays in the AFC, so that'll be interesting, too, if we ever see a, a Bills-Houston Texans matchup. That can definitely be a playoff matchup I could see happening. But I think it's really beneficial for Stefan Diggs because I think the relationship was kind of getting weird over there in Buffalo because he also tweeted out the other – I think it was yesterday, literally, he tweeted out. Someone said, like, Stefan Diggs would still – or um, Josh Allen would still be successful without Stefan Diggs. And he said, like – are you sure about that? It was something like that. And so we're going to see now how it is. But I really do think it 
does benefit Stefan Diggs to go somewhere else. Chance Stevens, no one's really talking about him. Let's talk a little bit about him in the Maryland basketball player. Can he can he help Maryland basketball next year? I'll talk about that after this ad from FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel's making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. You guys have to get on FanDuel. It's an awesome app to use, I know, because everybody tells me I'm personally not allowed to bet yet, but I've heard a bunch of great things about FanDuel. Whether you want to bet on the MLB and you want to take a no run first inning, or if you want to take the Orioles or the Nationals, if you're a DMV sports fan to win, you can do that. Or if you want to bet on the NBA or the NHL and take the Lakers to win or the whoever, the Wizards to win, if you're back to the DMV sports fan. And you get $200 in bonus bets if with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks to use to bet on the tournament, the MLB, the NBA, the NHL, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So it's Chance Stevens. Nobody's really talking about him, but I think we should actually talk about it a little bit more because it seems like everyone's kind of forgetting that he was on the team this year, but I don't want to forget because I think he has a chance to be some type of impact player, but I really have no idea. If you guys remember, he transferred into Maryland last year, but he got hurt and had a season ending injury. And we still don't know the type of player that he is going to be, but I just want to make sure we talk about him and give him some credit because people keep saying that, we should um, get a backup point guard in the portal. And I don't know if I feel as if we need that. I think about Jahari Long. I don't know what Jahari Long's if if the injury that he had from the game was uh, in the Big Ten tournament, if that was in a, a big injury. I still don't know. I've looked all around, so I'm assuming it's not. But I could also be wrong. But I keep looking to see if the Jahari Long injury was like anything I should be worried about. Because some people were saying like it could have been a t- – torn ACL, but I'm guessing it wasn't that because I haven't seen that anywhere. And so I think Jahari Long is a perfectly great backup point guard or backup guard next year. I think he's awesome in that spot for us. I think that's like probably one of the best backup guards you're going to get in the Big Ten if he stays at Maryland. And then I think about Chance Stevens and I'm like, hmm, this kid is interesting. I don't, I'm not saying we should depend on him for playing time. I don't know if he gets playing time next year, but I'm just saying we should probably talk about him more and include him when we're talking about different guys because he was a guy that this year that I thought was going to get some time and that I think was going to get some time. I think the Maryland staff expected him to play a little bit, and he wasn't anything insane his freshman year at Loyola Marymount. But he still was like a decent player that the Maryland staff obviously wanted. But his freshman year at Loyola Marymount, he averaged six points per game, shot 37% from three. I think that's a big thing with him. I think he shoots the three ball at a pretty high level. So it's interesting because we don't really talk about him. But last year, we talked about him more as being a potential guy that could help this team. I don't know if you, you would say he was coming off the bench or whatever, but obviously he averaged six points at Loyola Marymount as a freshman. That's nothing crazy to like be like, oh my gosh. That's what I'm saying. We can't be like depending on it, and we can't be like, yes, like he's going to be an impact player for us. But I also think we have to talk about it because Maryland staff recruited him for a reason. Obviously, he showed something. I don't really know exactly what that is because I haven't really gotten to see him play. I didn't watch Loyola Marymount. Uh, I didn't watch any of their games. So I still have to figure out what this Chance Stevens guy is about. But he should be back next year. But I'm interested to see. I was supposed to talk to him, but he still hasn't gotten back to me yet. But it'll be interesting to see what the Terp staff saw in him. But I do think he has a chance to be some type of decent type of player with this Maryland team. But I also think he might not be be much for us and he might decide to transfer after next year we'll see i'm expecting him to be a pretty high-end shooter and potentially be a backup guard and just provide guard depth overall on this team but we still have two 
We have two spots in the portal that Kevin Willard still can use. I'll be interesting to see where he goes. A lot of people think it should be the three, which I do too, but it'll be interesting to see what Kevin Willard picks up. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Today was a fun episode. Make sure you like and subscribe. We are every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.